This is the second part in the lecture of the histology of the female reproductive system. The histology of the uterus will be discussed in this lecture. A brief description of the anatomy of the uterus followed by its histological appearance will be given. The menstrual cycle will be discussed and correlated with endometrial changes that will occur secondary to hormonal changes. The histology of the cervix follows with description of the transformation zone and its clinical significance. The human uterus is pear-shaped with a thick muscular wall. Its rounded upper portion is the fundus and its wide upper two-thirds is its body or corpus. A narrower portion below this is the isthmus that separates the body from the lower segment of the uterus called the cervix. The endometrium is lined with simple columnar epithelium. The muscle layer of the uterus is called the myometrium, composed of interlacing bundles of smooth muscle separated by connective tissue. The outermost layer is the perimetrium composed of connective tissue. Smooth muscles decrease and connective tissue increases starting from the isthmus of the uterus and going towards the cervix. The cervix will consist primarily of dense connective tissue containing elastic fibers. The uterus is supplied by the uterine artery. It gives off the arcuate arteries that take a circumferential course in the middle of the myometrium. Penetrating branches of the arcuate arteries, called the radial arteries, give off lateral branches that supply the basalis of the endometrium. These are called the basal arteries. These basal arteries continue as coiled or spiral arteries that supply the functionalis layer of the endometrium. It is the spiral arteries that are sensitive to changes in hormone levels and plays a role in menstruation. Viewing the uterine endometrium at high power magnification, tubular glands called the uterine glands can be seen extending downwards from the epithelium into a very thick layer of connective tissue called the endometrial stroma. The endometrium undergoes monthly cyclic changes in histological appearance in response to changes in the levels of the ovarian hormones. At the end of each menstrual cycle, when the oocyte is not fertilized, two-thirds of the endometrium, called the stratum functionale, is sloughed off accompanied by extravasation of blood from the blood vessels of the stroma. This is the menstrual flow that continues for three to five days. The deeper portion of the endometrium, called the stratum basale, persists and regenerates the functionalis layer in the next menstrual cycle. The endometrium undergoes cyclic alterations in its histological appearance in response to repeating changes in hormonal levels. It is where the blastocyst or embryo implants and it contributes to the maternal portion of the placenta. The menstrual cycle consists of two synchronized and interrelated processes that occurs in the ovaries and in the uterus. The ovarian cycle is a development of the ovarian follicle leading to ovulation, and the uterine cycle is a formation of the functional layer of the endometrium in response to ovarian activity. This cycle repeats in an average of 28 days, but normally it ranges from about 25 to 30 days. It is divided into three stages, menstrual, proliferative, and secretory stage. A menstrual cycle starts with the first day of menstruation and ends with the start of the next menstrual period. The menstrual stage starts with the first day of menstruation and usually lasts for five days. The next is the proliferative stage, starting on the day after menstruation till before ovulation on a 28-day menstrual cycle. The proliferative stage is from day 6 to day 13. Day 14 is the middle of the menstrual cycle, and this is when ovulation occurs. The secretory phase follows after ovulation, 
and this is from day 16 to day 28, after which the next menstrual cycle will start again if the oocyte is not fertilized. There is communication between the pituitary gland, ovaries, and uterus during the menstrual cycle. The menstrual cycle begins with menstrual bleeding or menstruation with shedding of the stratum functionale layer of the uterine endometrium. It is associated with a rapid decline of hormonal stimulation. The proliferative phase follows. It coincides with the development of the ovarian follicles. Hence, it is also called the follicular phase. About this time, follicle stimulating hormone secreted by the pituitary gland gradually increases, stimulating the development of several follicles in the ovaries. The growing follicles will start to secrete estrogen and progesterone. In response to the increasing hormones, the endometrium will gradually thicken secondary to cellular proliferation. In the middle of the menstrual cycle, there is a sudden surge of luteinizing hormone that leads to ovulation, which usually occurs 16 to 32 hours after the surge begins. This occurs at day 14 on a 28-day menstrual cycle. The secretory phase follows. It is correlated with the secretion of progesterone by the functional corpus luteum and is also called the luteal phase. Luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone decreases. The ruptured graphene follicle forms the corpus luteum, which produces the increasing levels of progesterone and estrogen. Progesterone and estrogen causes the lining of the uterus to further thicken. The endometrium undergoes monthly cyclic changes in its thickness and histological appearance in response to fluctuating levels of ovarian hormones. The next two slides will talk about the changes occurring in the endometrial lining of the uterus during the menstrual cycle. In the proliferative phase, there is proliferation of cells in the epithelium of the stratum basale resulting in restoration of the surface epithelium and active proliferation of stromal cells. There is progressive lengthening of the endometrial glands. These regenerative changes result in growth of the endometrium from a postmenstrual thickness of 0.5 mm to 2 to 3 mm. The uterine glands are initially relatively straight, but they later become more sinuous as the epithelial cells accumulate glycogen displacing the nucleus towards the apex. The coiled portions of the arcuate arteries that were lost during menses regenerate and take on a spiral course as they lengthen. The secretory phase, extending from day 15 to day 28 of the cycle, is characterized by glands of the functionalis layer becoming more tortuous. It acquires lateral succulations that result in a larger lumen. The glycogen content of the cells decreases and is actively secreted into the lumen. Elongation and convolution of the coiled arteries continue and the stroma becomes edematous. On the menstrual phase of a cycle in which an ovum is not fertilized, the corpus luteum degenerates, resulting to a drop of progesterone and estrogen levels. This leads to periodic contraction of the spiral arteries, resulting to ischemia of the stratum functionalis layer. This layer soon degenerates, followed by shedding of clumps of necrotic endometrium, and by day three or day four of menses, the entire functionalis layer of the endometrium sloughs off. Blood loss is normally about 35 ml. The basalis remains intact and soon begin to regenerate a new functionalis layer. The cervix is the lower part of the uterus, composed primarily of fibromuscular tissue. The lower end of the cervix that projects into the vagina is the portia vaginalis or ectocervix. The endocervix surrounds the endocervical canal and is continuous with the uterine cavity 
through a constriction called the internal os. It is continuous with the vagina through the external os. Looking at the histological architecture of the cervix, this is the portia vaginalis or ectocervix covered with stratified squamous epithelium. This is the endocervix lined with simple columnar epithelium. A higher magnification of the junction of the endocervix and ectocervix will show an abrupt transition of the epithelium from stratified squamous to simple columnar. This is called the squamo-columnar junction or transformation zone. Cervical cancer usually develops in this area. A sexually active female is advised to have a yearly pap smear, a routine screening procedure for cervical cancer. Risk factors for this type of cancer are human papilloma virus infection, older age, poorer socioeconomic status, multiple sexual partners, and early onset of sexual activity. A higher magnification of the endocervix shows the endocervical canal, lined by tall columnar epithelium with nuclei displaced to the base by mucous droplets. Highly branching cervical glands extends into the submucosa lined by a similar epithelium. Secretion of the cervical glands are influenced by the changing hormones. Near ovulation, the cervical gland secretion is thin and filmy, while secretion during the luteal phase is thick and curd-like. The consistency of the cervical discharge can be used as a contraceptive method, or what we call the Billings ovulation method. Immediately after ovulation, the cervical mucus is clear and slippery, like raw egg white. This mucus type is referred to as spin barquet, a German word meaning stretchable. This is a result of high estrogen levels, and this quality of cervical mucus is easier for sperms to penetrate. By stretching the mucus between your thumb and index finger, one can see if the cervical discharge has this good stretch quality meaning it can be stretched four to five inches before it breaks. With this type of mucus, the female has the greatest chance of getting pregnant. During the luteal phase, the high levels of progesterone causes the mucus to thicken and appear curd-like. The gross anatomy of the uterus, which includes its parts and its blood supply, was described. This was followed by the histologic appearance of the different layers of the uterine wall with emphasis on the endometrium and its response to the changing hormonal levels secondary to the menstrual cycle. Basic concepts of the menstrual cycle was explained and correlated with ovarian and uterine changes. Lastly, the histology of the cervix was discussed with clinical significance of the transformation zone and cervical discharge.